March 2001. I never heard of that. Gentlemen of the press, yesterday at the floor of the Senate, we also yet another onslaught against Nigerian workers and its people through the anti workers bill sponsored by one Mr. Hain Kinoko Biri, a senator from Bayelsa State, seeking to make it unlawful for the trade unions in Nigeria to embark on any strike without obtaining the permission of the different organs of the union through a ballot. We are forced to respond to this new agenda because of the perceived spirit and prejudices, including the powers behind it. If it is a punitive move to punish Nigerians for the fuel price high struggle or an attempt to make it difficult for Nigerians to resist the future anti-people policy of the government, it will fail. Such laws with obvious fraudulent intentions, which negate democratic practices and international conventions of which Nigeria is a part of, often suffer the share of ignoring ignorability. We regret that this is coming at a time when there are more serious issues confronting Nigeria as a nation. It is mind-boggling that Mr. Heineken Lokobiri, who receives millions of Nara every month from taxpayers' money, will decide to waste the people's time in pursuit of frivolous constructs to muzzle the, the various sideboards of the people's questions. This is an expression of complete intolerance to democratic expressions and an attempt to reduce the space available to Nigerians to freely express their opinions on issues germane to national survival. The arguments can pass in support of the proposed amendments to the acts are not only laughable, but show serious lack of understanding of not only the relevant laws of the country, but also the operations of the trade union in Nigeria. The Nigerian trade union movement is still growing and has actually lost most of the political influence it wielded before the immediately before and immediately after the nation's independence, when it was the major rallying point for the nationalists and a senior and a senior ally of the political parties in shaping the imagined government. Presently, the Labour movement in the UK are represented by the TUC, as represented by the TUC is a major partner in the Labour Party, while the FLCIO in the U.S. is a major stakeholder in the Democratic Party, where they freely contribute both financially and technically, but the labor movement in Nigeria is yet to rise to the 1940s and 1960s level. In Nigeria, talkless of matching what obtains in the U.K. and the U.S., where Mr. Lopo Buri drew his references. It is important that we state categorically that the labor movement in Nigeria is one of the most de democratic sectors of the nation, operating in line with the international best practices. Our processes have become timeless and have been well tested as it concerns this matter. The trade union derives their daily operations from elected or statutory organs of the union. These organs are the, camp, the central working committees, the National Executive Council, the National Delegates Conference. While the central working committee is made up of the president and the general secretaries of the affiliate unions, the National Executive Council is made up of the principal officers of the various state councils, including Abuja. These organs involve hundreds of men and women well tested in national and international issues from all over the country, each bringing the position and interest of their respective states. Of their respective states must be consulted and approved, approved as sought before major decisions are taken, one of which is weighing the strike option. 
Those who are sponsoring this bill, both the ones on the floor of the Senate and the ones behind the mask, have shown a total disdain for Nigerians. Their sensitivities, their sensibilities and desires, and have further shown the contempt with which they hold the pillars of the nation's democratic practices, attempts to step through opposing voices have never succeeded in the long run. They always backfire. We urge them to learn from history, claiming to be smarter than those who have failed in the past. By pushing this bill will ultimately, will ultimately be their adventures. Nigerians are daily taking care of those who are bent on causing and continued running, ruining of this country and witching down and witching down bastions of liberty and free speech and choice. Instead of having the courage to, to address the numerous security challenges facing us as a nation, and instead of coming up with relevant laws to deal with the economic issues of corruption in the country, and instead of creating legislation to generate employment and reduce poverty, the sponsors of this bill rather decided to assault the parents. That is why we condemn this attempt as an insult on our relevant collective psyche as a people and as a nation. It shows that what is important to them is making laws that will put them in a cocoon away from our prying eyes, putting Nigerians in a straight jacket, but unable to constructively respond to their actions. We urge Lopobiri to focus his energy on the employment crisis in Nigeria, and especially Bayelsa State, which has one of the largest unemployment rates in this country. We should be concerned about this as their senator. He should be concerned about this as their senator. He should be worried about corruption. He should be worried about infrastructural decay in his state. He should be worried about the bombings, both in his state and in other parts of the country. Government must listen to us and must therefore not seek to silence this voice. We call on Senator Heineken to quickly withdraw that bill and apologize to Nigerians to avoid going down permanently into, history, into the history book of the infamy. That is why we applaud the progressive voices in the Senate who are in the majority that spoke vehemently against this renewed attack. Their names shall be written in gold and we urge them to make sure that the rights of Nigerians are not further trampled upon by those who think that lawmaking starts and ends will raising the bars of separation or disconnect between the people and the government or shutting the doors against the people from seeing what those in government are doing. Nigerians are behind these voices and Nigerian workers take cognizance and are prepared to work with those, these voices that only, not only to pull down this bill but other such pillars of oppression and emasculation that may come before the assembly or has already become a law. Thank you very much.